we live in an amazing time as developers. What I want to talk about today is Gemini Flash 2.0. And the reason I want to talk about this model is I believe we have spanned past the times of just having a single model we pay for. I'm seeing more and more people, myself included, actually having multiple subscriptions to models. And I think Gemini Flash 2.0 is one that you should give a pretty high consideration to, especially with API access. And I'm calling this presentation more of a shovel, not a bulldozer. And I'll explain a little bit about what that means as we go forward here. So first off, what is Gemini 2.0 Flash? It is a model released by Google that has a 1 million token context window for up to about 1,500 pages of file uploads. And it's a model that I like to think of as sort of the Gemini Mini model, similar to how we have like a Grok 3 Mini, or we'll have a Grok 3 Mini, or the O3 Mini. So I think about this as like the mini version of the Gemini Advanced model. My TLDR on this is after using it nonstop for about five days, actually a little longer, I'd say roughly 50 hours, primarily in Roo code, I will say I like it, but it's not for everything. You know, it's really good at certain things. Like if it's if you're doing something in a single file, it does an incredible job, like amazing job. If you're doing a one-shot prompt, like generating some Python script, it does a great job. But if the complexity gets up there too high, it starts to struggle a little bit. Although, I'll show you an example of one time that it actually surprised me. And people are starting to notice. I was browsing Open Router, and look at this. For top today, it actually surpasses Claude 3.5 Sonnet for the number of tokens. Now, this changes every day, so I don't know what it'll look like right now if you go look at it. But this was really amazing to me, because it wasn't that long ago when I was actually very negative towards Google's models. I felt like they were very behind. But now I've come around to think they actually have something very special with Gemini Flash 2.0. And I'll get into the details of that here in just a second. What did I use it for? Mostly coding. Most of my use case is coding. So if you care about it for other things, I'm sorry I can't help you there. But my technology is Python, I do a lot of stuff in AWS with uh, serverless, so CDK, SDK type stuff, Vue.js, uh, Postgres, TypeScript, stuff like that. A lot of front-end code. So it just so happened that that week I was doing a lot of front-end code. I, I work all over the stack, but I was doing a lot of, um, a lot, a lot of uh, front-end code. I also did do some machine learning models with it but I ultimately had to kind of do some of my own manual stuff on top of it because I didn't find it as strong as like other models. And I ended up falling back to a few other models when I got further on and I just wanted a little extra help. It's incredibly good at writing unit tests. I used it for that quite a bit. And it did a really good job helping me with writing new APIs. Like it picked up the format correctly. It, it actually had my authentication set up correctly. Really, really, really good job. But sometimes it surprised me. To set some context for this, I installed Linux and I pulled this repo down. I haven't ran npm install. I did I did it all purposely. I wanted to see like how a model would actually respond when there are just tons of errors. And watch what it does here. I'm asking it basically to generate an email for a task, taking a task ID, and the API should save the email content to a new field. Pretty easy, relatively simple. But watch what it's doing here. It's actually coming in and configuring my tsconfig.json file. All fine, because it's trying to figure out why those errors are happening. Now it's reading my package.json file, which I started thinking, that's actually pretty sweet. Like um, typically Gemini doesn't do, Gemini Flash 2.0 doesn't do as great a job navigating into other files, but this time it landed on needing to be able to run npm install. And I was like, okay, this is actually pretty sweet, to be honest. Now, I hit an error because on my Linux version, I had a newer version of Node. I needed to downgrade. It wanted to use Node 16. That's fine. I typically use Node 20 in this project, uh, but I let it do its thing because I just wanted to see kind of how it would play out. It used it properly. It runs npm install again. It started to blow my mind a little bit at this point because 
I didn't expect it to be able to kind of follow this this route as well as it did. And then the one thing to keep the, the your eye on is the price. We're at almost seven cents, six and a half cents up there, which is amazing. And now it wants to run my build command. This is perfect. Like it did everything right. The API was pretty good. I just needed to go and add that field to the model. I was very, very, very excited about that. And check this out. It picked it up. It's like, all right, now that field is missing. And now it's going to go add that field to my model file. And it's going to go kick off the build again, which isn't totally right because I actually have a migrate step you have to run and this is in dev. But anyway, like I was still very excited to see it doing this well. And we're looking at less than 10 cents for all of this work here. I could never do that, all that work for 10 cents of my own time. It's just amazing. So I was very impressed with that particular time where it just seemed to perfectly shine. Okay, with that example out of the way, I want to talk about a few more things here. If you need to add like a component or a button to a screen, I know, I feel like we're getting, maybe I'm just talking about myself. I'm getting lazy as an engineer now, where if I need to go add something in, I don't want to go actually do the code and I just tell the LLM to go do it now. And then I verify that it's right. But if you need to do that type of thing, it's so cheap to do it with Gemini Flash 2.0. And it works very well. But it did struggle a little bit at creating new components for mockups. Claude is still the king at that. They're just amazing at pulling in an image and building a component off of it. It was very consistent. It stayed true to the code that I was using. It wasn't like Claude. One of the things that drives me nuts with Claude is that it constantly turns my code into React. Because React is like the most popular framework. But I want it to stay in view. Gemini Flash 2.0 did a great job at that. Did a great job picking up some of my APIs. It even did some complex ones. But it did fall apart a little bit in some of the really, really complex ones that I was doing. And it really does a good job at code cleanup and suggestions on how to improve things. So overall, like I very highly enjoy using Flash 2.0 and it brought my expense of the API down significantly. Like there's no reason for me to be using Claude to generate uh, a simple front end component unless I'm doing it from an image or add a button. I can pay a lot less and have that same job done just as good. Now, there are some things I do want to try with Gemini Flash 2.0. The thinking experimental. I did try this in real code. And I felt like it wasn't great, but I also didn't feel like it was bad. And maybe it's slightly better. Maybe it's not. Like, honestly, I don't feel like it follows the instructions that real code gives it as well. So I do want to play around with that more. I typically, I abandoned that pretty quickly because I wanted to make this focused on the base flash 2.0 but i do want to touch on that a little bit it's like there's still more to do there and it is still an experimental so maybe it'll get better over time and i actually saw recently they're doing the experimental with apps i want to play with this and i feel like maybe when it comes out of experimental i'll give this an even bigger go but i'm very curious what this will actually enable me to do especially if i can get some of that to work like in my local tools that i'm running via the api and I'm also curious what the price will be of that. The context limit is kind of a tough su subject for me because I never really saw the benefit of it with Rue code. I felt like maybe it does hold a million context tokens, but if you get so far into something, I don't feel like it matters because it doesn't know what's important. So maybe it can hold all that, but it like loses track of things. You know, just like any other LLM, but the other LLMs will like cut you off or like throw you like an error like Claude does where you've reached your limit if you uh, use too many of those big prompts. So I do want to test this a little bit more. Like I'd like to really figure out a way to test that 1 million token context limit, but it wasn't noticeable. I guess that's my main point here. And agentic work. Um, I have done some testing with function calling and uh agent work and i've been very impressed but not enough to be able to say that like i'm going to switch things over to it so i i did minor testing on it i do want to spend some more time on that because it could save pretty significant value for me if i 
actually was able to move some of my workload over to Gemini Flash 2.0. Claude plus DeepSeek V3 are still the kings for me with root code. And DeepSeek V3 is fairly cheap. But the problem I've been having with it lately is sometimes the API is kind of spazzing out or sporadic because I just think a lot of people use it. Um, Claude, on the other hand, is just freaking amazing. It can do the complex stuff, uh, but it's expensive, like significantly expensive. Deep Seek V3 is definitely, so basically my tier would be Claude for the things that I don't mind paying a fortune for and Deep Seek V3. And then honestly, all my light grunt work, I've been sending to Gemini Flash 2.0 and I've continued that even into this week. And the reason I call it a shovel is it's really a good, decent shovel because check out the price here. This model is incredibly cheap we're talking 10 cents for 1 million input tokens 40 cents for 1 million output tokens when they release the caching look at the caching prices it's going to be less than three cents for a million tokens cash it is absolutely mind-boggling to me because i can work an entire day like hammering this model and be about a dollar and if I were to do that with Claude, it can be like 10 times that amount. So I have to be very careful because I can rack up a ton of money really quick with Claude. So I'm calling it a good decent shovel because sometimes you don't need a bulldozer. Sometimes you just need a shovel to add a button to a screen. And that is really, really, really what Gemini Flash 2.0 just excels at is light, simple tasks that aren't overly complex except for the times that you might get surprised by it doing a complex task for you or a relatively complex task. So my bottom line is Gemini Flash 2.0 is good value. It is very good for what it costs. And I would go as far as to say it's probably one of the best models for value that I've tested so far. Now, there are so many models that I couldn't test them all. I do think we as engineers are going to have to get smart about how we're using our coding team around us. Because that if you watch some of my content, you, you see that I believe we're going to be responsible for managing a lot more in the product. We're going to be much more product engineers. And as part of that, I'm going to have my Gemini Flash 2.0 worker, my Claude worker, my OpenAI worker, and they're, they are probably going to be good at certain things. And I actually... You, do that in the software that I build today that we're using AI inside the software. I have some things for Claude. I have some things for OpenAI. I have 4.0 for some. I have O3 Mini for some. Because it's just models are good at certain things. And we need to do that also in our coding that we do. Anyway, I think that closes it out. Hopefully this has been interesting. And I do think it's a uh, topic I want to think more about, which is the value of a model, not just how good it is. I think there is like a value per dollar metric that we need to start formulating somehow, which I haven't totally figured out. But I will tell you my opinion right now is this is probably one of the highest value models that you can get via the API for the price. And I'd love to know your thoughts on that in the comments below. If this has been helpful for you, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. I'm getting close to 4K subscribers. And with all that, everyone have a great day. Peace out.